Hi, my name's Tom. Welcome to my physics class. I'm a teacher at Inter Manchester, and today I'm going to show you what a physics class looks like at Inter Manchester. Today I'm going to show you how to determine the wavelength of a laser light. I've chosen to experiment as there are very simple processes and I've got some students here with me today to help show you just how easy it is to do. To measure the wavelength of a laser light, I'm going to show you two different techniques. The first experiment involves what are called young slits and the second experiment uses a diffraction grating. In the two experiments, the equipment that we'll be using is the bench laser, slide holder, calculator, paper, young slits, diffraction grating, blue tack, pen and a metre rule. We're going to start off with the Young Slits experiment, a very famous experiment performed about 220 years ago by Thomas Young, who actually proved that light was a wave. To do this, we need to take a bench laser and we're going to project it onto a pair of Young Slits, which are a pair of very, very fine, narrow slits. There are then three measurements we need to take. The first one is the distance from the slits to the screen. The second one, is the distance between the two slits, and then the third is the distance between the fringes on the interference pattern. For the Young Slits experiment, we set up the laser about three meters away from a wall, point the laser at the wall, and blue tack a piece of A4 paper to the wall covering the laser dot. We place the Young Slits into the slide holder and position it just in front of the laser. Measure the distance from the Young Slits to the wall, then turn the laser on and point the laser at the slits. We then adjust the laser position so that an interference pattern is seen on the paper. The pattern that appears on the paper is a series of fringes. Draw a line in the centre of a fringe near one end of the pattern and another line in the centre of a fringe at the other end of the pattern. You count the number of fringe widths between the two lines. One fringe width is the distance between the centre of two adjacent fringes. We measure the distance between the two lines and then count the number of fringes. Okay, so for the young slits then, the measurements were the distance from the slits to the screen, 2.66 metres. For the slit separation, the manufacturer has told us that it's 0.25 millimetres. Now we measured 10 of the fringe widths and that was 71 millimetres. So 1D is 71 over 10, which is 7.1 millimetres. We can then put those three measurements into the equation where the wavelength of light is slit separation multiplied by the fringe width divided by slit to screen separation. So that gives us 0.25 milli times by 7.1 milli and divide all that by 2.66 metres and that gives us 667 nanometres which is Remarkably, one nanometre away from the actual wavelength of the laser. The second experiment uses a diffraction grating. I'll place the diffraction grating in the slider holder and position it just in front of the laser. We now measure the distance from the diffraction grating to the wall, turn on the laser and point the laser at the grating. We can adjust the laser so that an interference pattern is seen. This pattern is made of the central dot on the paper and either one or two dots either side of the dots, which will be well spaced apart. We identify the first dot to the side and blue tack a piece of A4 paper over this laser dot. We then draw a line in the centre of each of the two dots and then we measure the distance between the two dots. What we're going to do now is make the calculations. If there's the diffraction grating and the laser light shines onto it, we measured the zeroth dot and then the first order diffraction pattern. That gives us an angle feet which we need to measure. This measure, uh, that measurement that was 2.54 meters. And that was the 909 millimeters. So what we have is that tan theta is 909 
that was 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2.54. That gives us that uh, theta is 19.7 degrees. We can then put that into the uh, diffraction grating um, uh, equation. Firstly, we do need to know D, which is the distance between adjacent uh, 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 slits on the grating, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. So then we have d sine theta is n lambda, so lambda equals d sine theta over n, which is 2 times 10 minus 6 times by the sine of 19.7, divide that by, and n was 1 because it was the first order, and that gives us the wavelength of 674 nanometers, which is within six nanometers of the actual wavelength. So, how did you get on with the experiment? Yeah, it was quite easy and simple, easy to carry out. Uh, what do you think you both learned from this experiment? Um, I learned that the onslaughts is quite easy to do. You just have to know the right formula to use and then the right measurement to intake and then just plug in the variables and then you'll get your result of the wavelength. Why do you think it's important to do practical work in science lessons? To me personally, I feel like practical actually enhance the knowledge that you learn on the subject for this uh, young slit. For example, if you do it practically, say if you measure this variable and then you actually plug it in the equ equation, you know what that variable is, so it's you memorize it better. And lastly, what do you most enjoy about studying physics and science? Physics, uh, I love finding out how uh, everyday ordinary object behaves and how the laws of physics applies to them. I hope you enjoyed this classroom taster session. If you're interested in studying science uh, into Manchester, please get in touch. Thanks for watching.